Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. We're back with another Wonder Game. It has been a little while, apparently entirely too long, because I got sent like four Wonder replays over the last week. But we're going to go ahead and dive into one of these. Before that, though, I do need to make a couple of quick announcements. First of all, the map of the week is Fields of the Great Phoenix, the water version. If you go to the map vault on the FAF client, it is right there on the first page. going to take the four versus four version and play a few games. If you have a good one, send me the replay, and I will take it into consideration for Saturday's live cast. Going to pick the best one that gets sent to me, and then we will play a game, so do not forget about that. Speaking of the live cast, that is the topic of the second announcement. I made a quick blurb about my Patreon account in a check-in video a couple of weeks ago, and the response was tremendous. Awesome. I really appreciate the guys that bumped up or added support. So that is amazing. I had a thought though. One of the number one requests on this channel is streaming in 1080p. I do the live cast. I can only handle 720p. And a lot of people have uh, asked me why that is. Well, that's because I have the highest residential connection that is available in my area, which is 4 meg upload. You've got to have 3,500 to push any quality 1080p at all um, below that it's too pixelated so you got to push 720 with the lower bit rate um, and I cannot push 3500 and still play a game I just don't have the bandwidth so my request is if you guys will increase the patreon amount to 140 that is an additional $40 on what was increased last week. That will pay for a business connection to my house, which will have an 8 meg upload speed, and I can push 1080 streams at any point, um, definitely for the Saturday cast and then for some other things that I had planned with Potato and that kind of thing. Um, and it'll just help clear up that whole issue. Basically, I can't undertake that cost at this point um, so if you guys would like 1080p streaming, if you want some of the other stuff that comes with that, tournament streams, um, possibly some Twitch streaming at different points, go ahead and head over to the Patreon page. The link is in the description, and if the support is there, I would be more than happy to bring it to you guys. I just can't do it in my situation right now. So that is there if you guys wish to support in that way. All right. Without any further ado, let's go ahead and hit the game. It is a five versus five wonder. Let's go ahead and bump up the speed and then we'll introduce the teams as they get started on their initial build. So on the north side, we have Pascal taking the air slot with the traditional Aeon faction choice. Then on the right hand side, we have Lucky Knot taking UEF, WSL Seraphim on the front, Discombobulate as UEF on the other mid, and then Casimus as Cybern on the south tip. Awful lot of UEF and some interesting names on that side. Momo Uchilla taking left flank with Cybern on the southern team. Jonas 2, he is taking Aeon in the air slot as well. Gotta love those swift wins. The T2 air is critical on Wonder. It's one of those maps where you do have a dedicated eco slot, but the map is so small that swift wins are actually tremendously useful. You're not necessarily going to have to skip straight to the ASF stage. Um, Gebmas is taking Cybert in the middle slot, then Nagel, is that Nagel or Nagai? I'm gonna go with Nagel, it seems more appropriate to have an L there. Uh, he is taking UEF on the other center slot, and then UEF, the faction of choice for Mycin, who has already run way over here, and is picking up that Omni and Titan wreck, looks like unopposed. So he's gonna get all of that tasty, tasty mass for his team. Looks like the same kind of thing going down for the middle here. Nagel is shooting an engineer up to front. There, the ACU is headed up, but he is going to stop and get a Vex on the way. Really odd, no one on the north side is picking up their reclaim. That is very, very strange. I don't think I've ever seen that before. All of these guys should be well aware of what goes down on this map, but apparently they're not, uh, not going to go for the mass. Their loss It's going to be several thousand in the pocket of the southern team. You can see Mycin right there. Cool 2300 reclaim. Pretty much entirely off of those two structures and then the same thing is going to happen for Nagel. But hey, overflow to your team, you can boost your entire team up using that mass. Alright, on the north side, looks like Lucky Nut is going to be pushing out some mech marines. He's going to try to get a little bit of raiding action in. Unfortunately, he is going to 
pass by a striker, but is actually going to outrun it and shoot over that direction. Nice little dodge there, and then another moving around the back. So probably going to try to tag out these engineers. That is an aggressive air pattern build there for power. Hopefully he can knock out that template there, and that will force Mycin into having to re all of that stuff, which is highly, highly annoying. I was warned in advance that this game has epicness at the end of it, but might be a little bit slow starting off. So we're going to kind of buzz through this. It's probably going to be your typical spam buildup on Wonder, and we'll have to see what insanity awaits us at the end. Oh man, 31 health. Just barely tagged out that lab, and then the striker picking up the kill before that engineer died, so not a single engineer was lost that day. Thankfully, or an engineer actually. Yeah need to pull my head out and actually focus. Okay, so Final Mech Marine has been tagged out. That is going to conclude the early aggression phase for the northern side, and it looks like there really wasn't anything going on in the south. There is, however, a large Mantis buildup for Cassinus. Looks like he is going for a spammy as all get out build. Got loads and loads of land factories planned. Discombobulate has a few for himself. He's got two out front, three and seven total. Maybe a Tech 2 build there, and quite a few land factories going down for Momo Uchilla as well. Momo is going to get an air factory online though, he's not going for strictly land, so that's going to require a bit more power as we're seeing down there, and he's probably going to go upgrading a little bit earlier after having built that much power. More spam for WSL, and quite a few factories coming on for Lucky Knot as well. This is kind of where you see an excellent example of where spam trumps fire bases. Because on Open Wonder, that was a really roundabout way of phrasing to get to a really ordinary statement. Reduce your word count, break. Um, <laughs> the, uh, if you start building a fire base, if you build point defense, if you do anything stationary, you're going to get run around on this map. You've got to have a ton of units on hand in order to be able to move from one side to the other to help out your teammates if one of your guys starts getting swamped. Um, basically, if you're not mobile, you're dead, is how this map works. And I love the walls going down for Mycin. He is narrowing the avenue of access for Lucky Knot. That means that he is going to be able to anticipate the exact direction that units are coming from and hopefully intercept much more easily. Looks like Gebmas is going ahead and moving towards the left just a little bit. And Discombobulate's not pushing his unit count up very high. He's building almost entirely engineers and going for an early upgrade. That is T2 at the 6 minute mark, which is not necessarily that early. And Gebmas also has the same. But uh, yeah, he is definitely low on units, which means that since he's not mobile, Gebmas can push to the left without any concern, really. He's got a single Cerberus turret down, and that will be more than sufficient to lock down this area. On the right-hand side, WSL pushing in on Nagel. That is going to be a little bit harder to stop. Nagel throwing down a T1 point defense. There are some Zooies in the back there, so point defense is not going to entirely cut it as the T1 artillery begins to come raining down. Nagel is going to push forward, though. Point defense is out of the question, and... Yeah, units streaming in from both sides. This is an excellent team denial here. A few units from the left, a few from the right, and comms straight up the center. That is going to put a halt to WSL's incredibly aggressive push. He is going to continue, though. Second ACU coming in, trying to throw down a triad. I'm kind of questioning the logic behind the triad because it is kind of a close quarters engagement, so a T1 point defense might work a little bit better, but he is going to get it down. That is going to start shredding those units. Commander moving forward, probably going to overcharge that thing to death, and he still has plenty of units on hand. Now we're getting into a dicey situation because... Since Mycin has moved his units in this direction, that means that he has opened himself up. There are now tanks that are going to start running by the wall. He needs to refocus that triad and try to pick these off as they're coming around the back side of his base. WSL bearing down on Mycin. This is not looking pretty. He's actually down to half health already. Still a load of tanks and artillery bearing down on him. This is... Ah, good. We've got a second commander in here going to force WSL back. And thankfully, he has expended his unit count 
he's not going to have enough to continue their T2 tank rolling out for, I keep forgetting his name, Nagle, the gray player, whatever he is. And while all of these units were focused on the right, there was a little bit of an attempted movement from Kiev, but that is not going to go anywhere because there are a ton of tanks for WSL. WSL doing a very good job of increasing his unit count versus what the other players are putting out. Eventually, he's going to run into a stall because he doesn't have any T2 online. The T1 is not going to be able to compete with mass pillars. But for now, he has so many units, even though they're only tier 1, that he's pretty much just overwhelming anything that these guys are throwing in front of him. What few units Discombobulate had are now streaming in against Nagle. Nagle has pretty much nothing. You've got a couple of pillars and a single T2, or T1 point defense. There's a Sparky. When was the last time you saw a Sparky on the map? Always love those combat engineers. On the south side, looks like we have a little bit of a Cyber and Firebase war going down, which is pretty much the last thing you would expect. A couple of Cerberus turrets, a shield here and there, and some traditional Viper spam. That thing we can come to expect. T1 units did get around the back side of Mycin's base, which caused a bit of damage to his eco. He's down to 23 mass to take income, which is not where you want to be on a scaling up Wonder game. Ecos get out of hand pretty quickly on Wonder. If you let somebody get ahead significantly, they're going to drop a T4 on your head, and no one likes that kind of neck problem, so you definitely want to scale up your eco to match. And this kind of thing is not what you want to have happening. Thankfully, he does have some T1 tank wrecks in the back. It's going to help him get those mass extractor upgrades on the home mechs. But overall, a pretty significant loss for the southern slash right hand team. That was a lot of damage to Eco, a lot of lost potential. And uh, yeah, this is going to take a little bit to recover from. On the south side, I am greatly impressed with the amount of units that Cassimus is fielding. He is on equal footing with Momo Uchilla as far as mass income goes, 47 to 43, but he has pushed out a significantly higher number of units, in large part, I think, to reclaiming this area down here. He was able to get units down there pretty early in the game and some engineers to suck up all those rocks, and I think that is going to be the mass difference. Cassimus with 10,000 reclaim and Momo Ushila with 6,000. So yes, 4,000 mass difference, if you can see what that buys you. It's actually pretty significant, especially at this point in the game. Nagel throwing down teaching point defense for all he is worth. Mycin doing the same. <clears throat> they are going to be able to push off that incredibly huge horde of T1 units and catch a commander out as well, shredding a lot of health off that guy. Lucky Nod is going to have to retreat back into his shield, just dipping below 9,000 health. He will be fine, but a little bit worse for wear for having taken all of those hits. So he's going to try for a stealth generator, which could potentially mean a T2 point defense creep. Not a huge fan, but it has worked on occasion. Especially if they can lock down this area with point defense and keep pushing their units in on the right hand side. This is going to put more and more pressure on Mycin. And he is currently the weakest link. Smallest economy, lowest unit count, all that jazz for the right side team. Nagel is actually not that far ahead of him. But he does have a little bit more of an established presence down here. A couple more point defense and a few more T2 engineers online to help out with that. So this is probably going to be where Mycin loses his base. He is out in front with his comm, and he's got a pretty good group of fleet-footed monkeys, but he is going to have to do an awful lot of kiting. He's not going to be able to directly engage, which means giving ground where his base is concerned, and that is not what you want to be doing when you're, yeah, losing your T2 max. This means that Mycin is going to pretty much get removed from the scoreboards, at least for a while. Although, he is doing a pretty good job of backing up these Mongeese. They're going to start racking up some kills. Looks like 3 to 5 across the board. So, about uh, 20 kills or so between all of those Mongeese. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. That's where the range comes in. You can pretty much stand out, not take any fire yourself and lay waste to the groups of T1. There is actually quite a bit of area of effect on Mongi's fire, and that is going to do wonders versus grouped up T1 like this. So the kill counts are going to bump up three to seven now. 
around 25 or so. Looks like the left side of the map, Momo Chill is having a little bit more trouble versus Casimus. Casimus not really directly making hay headway, but it's getting closer. His horde of units is gradually moving over to the right, and that means that the reclaiming engineers are going to be moving up as well. Right now, the reclaim kind of favors Momo, but it doesn't look like he's taking too much advantage of it, just kind of sitting. If you queue one of these factories to an attack move order, like right there, with engineers being produced, they're going to sit there and reclaim in a circle about that big. So you're going to get about a third of these available wrecks with just a couple of engineers out front. That would be tremendously helpful as far as his economy goes. Momo, let's check him out here. Momo is sitting on 7,200 reclaim, so not a whole lot different. And Casimus is on 13,000, so the gap continues to widen. Jonas on 10,000 and power stalling. Pascal on 9. Discompobulate on 14.7. Highest so far, 65 for Yeb, 13 for Casimus, uh, 7,200 for Lucky Not, WSL at 10,000, and Nagel at 9.5, Myson at 7.5. So, yes, more reclaim does favor the scoreboard, as it usually turns out, and we've lost a couple of monkeys, but we've got 11 kills, 10 kills, 7, and 8. So almost up to 40 kills just on those Mongies, and Mycin is up to 94 kills, about to tick his fifth veterancy on his commander. So he may have lost his base, he may be down to five units to his name, four now, but he is doing a fantastic job of trying to hold the gap. 99 kills, and a tank is definitely one of them. Overcharging away, at, yeah, is he? I don't think he has an energy storage. Ah, yes, the air player has given him an e-storage, so that is definitely something that you want to do if you have somebody lone gunning it. They may be getting power overflow, but they probably don't have overcharge, so you need to be a helpful teammate and give it to them so that they can be a helpful teammate and overcharge units. Lots of jesters. When was the last time you saw, at 18 minutes, jesters pouring out of a factory to deal with T1 units? This is the unconventional spam solution, but hey, it's probably working right here. Seeing Mantis drop left and right as long as these guys do patrol up into the base and try to resist this Mantis push. Momo Machilla standing firm in front of his base trying to deny this huge group of Medusa that is threatening his T2HQ. It's about to lose a mass extractor. There it goes, and there's three bricks pouring in. Ugh, the fire coming off of those bricks is brutal. You do not want to be standing in that amount of DPS. Momo overcharging one of them is going to start taking fire. And here comes the first T for the game. Monkey Lord coming in from Geb Mask. He is going to be the hero here, pushing the fire off of his teammate. Momo Uchilla retreating, probably thankful that those bricks are finally leaving him alone. He was down to 6,300 health, which is well within the range where the bricks could easily kill him. That could have been a tremendous problem. I'm sad that the Monkey Lord was not able to vet, but all of those T1 units were control k and that spider is going to move forward. Probably going to take out this fire base and more than likely everything else as well, because there's nothing on this side that could deny a Monkey Lord. Not unless air comes in to intervene. And at the moment, Jonas is ahead on Eco, but behind in score on air. I love the T2 gunships on the north side. This is starting to reclaim territory. We've got re-expanding Mycin, who is pushing out with engineers, trying to reclaim everything, rebuild his mass, but establish a footprint on the map. Gunships pinging off mechs on the top. Monkey Lord moving in on the left. There is a stab in the center, though. While everybody is distracted around the sides, hey, why not T3 point defense creep? Discombobulate coming in with some Ravagers. Once he gets those in range of the base, that's going to cause some very serious problems for this team. He is now in range of the T3 HQ. If he knocks that out, it's going to be some serious consequences. Looks like two mass extractors dropped those gunships before they ran into the ASF over there. Jesters are trying to help out with this situation, but unfortunately, Jesters are just too flimsy to stand up to any kind of anti-air whatsoever. Looks like they were able to get that T3 mobile. 
but a couple of hits from anything else and they will be down. I'm honestly surprised that these three have lasted this long. And there goes the Calm, a combination of T3 point defense fire and units moving in. Unfortunately, he just was not able to get it. And that means the Monkey Lord, oh, sad day. The Monkey Lord is going to die with him. And it was full health and plowing into that base. It did take out nearly the entire base for Cassinus. That's effectively removing a player. Not completely, but effectively. Although we can see how much that did for my... Oh, no! Two down! That means we've got two bases and three comms left for the right side. That is terrible. Ugh. Myson has actually done very well for himself for not having a base. He's got 111 kills on his commander. Unfortunately, all of those monkeys died. Sad, sad. A hero has fallen. Here comes a Galactic Colossus for Jonas. That will be able to deny all of these T3 tanks and hopefully regain a bit of a foothold on the map. We got a Fat Boy building for Discombobulate. No T4s planned for Pascal. Looks like none for the north side either. There is a T3 HQ that's pushing Titans at the moment. Kind of an interesting choice for UEF. I would be building Percivals if I were you, bud. Especially if a scout has found that GC, which definitely has because he's killed a bunch of tanks. If you don't know what's killing your tanks, you might have some situational awareness issues. Lots of pillars moving up. Lucky Knot is sitting on about two-thirds health, but I think we should be able to more than deal with this small group of units. Single-handedly go to war with Overcharge, but no, he is going to bring in the troopers. We've got Titans moving in. We're going to be able to deal with T2 and T1 fairly easily, especially with the help of that commander and the little shield that are rolling in. So no danger there. Galactic Colossus is moving northward. Why is he not intercepting all of these units, you might ask? Well, he's got another Galactic Colossus coming, so that one is going to be able to cover the left flank, and this GC is going to move directly through Red's base. Might actually be able to pick up a commander kill there. Not the most critical commander in this game. He is not really holding a substantial amount of units or anything, but still, a commander is a commander, and the psychological damage can be great. Wall section's going down. On the left, I think it's going to be too little too late, though. He's only going to get a few down. And then here comes the Wagners. Wagners? Ah, somebody else who builds Wagners on land maps. What do you know? The speed advantage is awesome. Actually, interesting point of fact. Wagners do better versus commanders than rhinos do. Because there are more Wagners for the mass than rhinos, and they have the same damage potential. So... That means that it takes more overcharges to kill a pack of Wagners that are dealing the same amount of damage um, as the same amount of massive Rhinos would. So it actually works very, very well when you're fighting against a commander. The only problem with them is that they are a little bit more flimsy. They've got less health. That's going to be a terrible air loss for Jonas. He is still a bit ahead on the mass game, I think. Pascal is on 370. Nope, I'm wrong. The 472 that I was looking at is a reclaim number. He's actually around the same as Pascal. But he is cranking out GCs like there's no tomorrow. Looks like Lucky is... Well, Lucky not is actually Lucky because he's going to get the kill on that GC with Titans of all things. After a bit of a helping hand from four Strap Bombers, that GC is going to go down and probably going to get reclaimed and recycled into something awesome for the left side team. That makes two Galactic Colossuses is, 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 and those are going to, looks like, split up, move in separate directions. Got one guarding the base and one moving towards the northern end. This is a lot of reclaim for whoever wants to take it. Anybody who would uh, get out and get that mask can build pretty much whatever they want to. This fat boy is taking its sweet time building, but it is going to be out on the map soon enough. Discombobulate pushing a comfortable 300 mass per tick. Plenty to start cranking out some T4s. There is absolutely minimal cover on this side. The GC would make great headway on that end. Looks like this one is moving up. Mycin now has the commander's shield and gun upgrade. 
that's going to be everything that you can do combat-wise with the UEF uh, base you. And he is going to directly engage these T3 tanks. Doing a dang good job of it, too. Second T3 tank dropping. Looks like we're about to see a third to those glorious overcharges. Well, I don't know. He must be low on power. Let's check him out. Ooh, Strat Bomber's not good. He is power stalled. That is what's up. Let's see. His shield dropped and he shredded about half the health on his, a on his ACU with that Strat Bomber pass. If he gets really, really lucky and does not power stall again, then he will be fine as those bombs. Oh, that was close. That bomb hit like half a second before that shield went down. So as long as he can keep getting lucky like that, he'll be fine. Galactic Colossus moving up into the north. Thankfully, WSL is not being observant about those control Ks like the left side was. Casimus removing the veterancy potential as soon as that monkey got within reach and this Galactic Colossus on the other hand is just killing off those units as they come in reach. So he will be able to vet up at some point. Trekking after the ACU, which is running as he very well should. You don't want to be standing next to a Galactic Colossus. Fatboy coming online, that is going to be firing actually in two different directions. It's kind of hilarious. I don't think I've seen a Fatboy doing that before, but it's not often you see a Fatboy with units on both sides. It's usually a full frontal assault as a support unit behind a wall of Percivals. But hey, Wonder's always going to be a little bit different. And there is the awesome trample mechanic. You've got the T4s with the massive armor type. Anything they walk over explodifies. There's T2 gunships coming in, but unfortunately that is not going to be much help versus that quantity of armor. The Ravagers are doing a bit. The T1 artillery is doing a lot. And here we go, trampling through the engineers. Pop, pop. It's like popping bubble wrap. I wonder if that's what GCs do in their downtime. Relax by popping some Aeon engineers. Actually, those are UAFs, so that does not apply. But you guys know what I meant. Full frontal eyeball beam. Lucky Knot is going to easily kill. Or he, bleh. Lucky Knot is going to die. That GC is easily going to kill Lucky Knot before he can walk out of range. Brink, you better get your words in order before you open your mouth. That's going to leave a lot of T2 gunships on hand for Pascal to use as he sees fit. Not sure where he's going to stick those. There's that Galactic Colossus running up the left hand side. That could actually be nasty. Is that on radar? No, it is not. But there is a T2 transport, or T1 transport rather, that is probably going to cross over it. Maybe not. This is interesting. That GC, ah yes, it has been scouted. Okay, good, 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 good. I was afraid that that was going to sneak all the way up into the base because the GC does engage units usually greater than their vision radius. So if you're like walking through a base, you won't see the Galactic Colossus a lot of times because the mass extractors and factories and stuff are dying before the GC walks into the vision radius. What on earth? Jonas abandoning a 7,000 health to completion GC in order to drop next to a fat boy and overcharge it to death. My goodness, you need a drop ship for the balls on this guy. Jonas is going to try to get in a second transport because the first one died. He's taking fire from that second fat boy way back. He's going to drop in that transport like it hit anything and then swing back into the base, probably to finish that Galactic Colossus that he so conveniently forgot about. Why would you do that? The risk. Well, it only got him down to half health. With that kind of track record, he could have dropped the second fat boy and killed it before he died. That wouldn't have really done a whole lot of good for his team, though, so I guess the retreat to the base was probably a good thing. That was some ridiculousness, though. Another Galactic Colossus. What is this? Is that the fifth? Oh, no. No. The ACU is on an upgrade, just calmly chillaxing in this base. Not even going to stop the upgrade. Casimus is out of here. That's actually going to take a significant chunk of the engineers off the edge of this base. Not too terribly much, Strategic but launch it is detected. some. And oh, 
nuke. Did that... What? There's no nuke defense. Anywhere. Why would you nuke the only player who doesn't have a base? Are you just sick of the annoyances? Are you sick of him killing things? There are 133 kills on that commander. If he dies in this nuke, it will have been... Yeah. They definitely got their money's worth out of that teammate. Galactic Colossus trying to focus fire here, but he's hitting the power generator. Ah, no, he is focus fired on the power generators. My bad. He's going to try to kill all these things off, eliminate the power supply for Pascal. But, hey, he's within reach of the commander. Let's go ahead and kill the comm and forget about the power. It was close. There goes the GC, but the commander is down. There is another fat boy online. Let's see, that is the third fat boy that's engaging, I think, the fifth Galactic Colossus. Let's see, there was one that died. One, two, three. That's the fourth. Whatever it is. If it is the fourth, the fifth is building in the back. That GC is going to engage the fat boy and probably kill it because it is within range. This is a problem, though. There are a lot of T3 and T1 units moving in on the right. You wonder why that might be a problem. Well, T1 artillery is useful at all stages of the game. Just about the most mass efficient base record there is. So even at 31 minutes into the game, you should still be concerned about a battalion of Zooey's rolling into your base, well, hovering into your base, one way or the other. T3 P Gen going down for Naggle. Looks like he's got plans for a fat boy of his very own. Gonna be in the proud ownership club. That Galactic Colossus heading towards the north, probably to try to cut off the flow of these units. And there's an Awasa. Why would you build an Awasa? That makes no sense. You just lost your air player. Why not reclaim that and build a chicken instead? Well, to each his own. T1 point defense going down on the right. This GC will probably be done before these get into the base though, so I think that will be fine. Galactic Colossus heading that south and here comes the bomb. Now see, if I were him, oh, nasty bomb. He could have actually gotten the T4 mercy kill with that, but that is a missed opportunity. If you control K and Awasa, time it out so that it drops its bomb and then dies, you can actually drop the wreck of the Awasa on what you intended to kill. And that means that you have 11,000 damage from the drop of the bomb. Strat Bomber's trying to deal with these as not the most efficient thing that could be happening, but hey, it's better than nothing. T1 point defense also online. Here comes the GC. I think this will be fine. It's probably going to lose a chunk of build power, but it's not the end of the world. That Awasa will drop for a total of 21,000 damage to a single target. So Nagel would have been dead. Would have been used. I love that thing. Use it all the time. It's amazing on set this game. Strat Bomber's doing a small amount of cult small amount of collateral damage that GC is going to stomp its way northward pick up the rest of those kills and the base is safe a little bit worse for wear but it is safe there's now two galactic colossuses is, is, is rolling north and yet another this is just like a t4 factory going down here throwing down an omni and then he had that string he's probably going to start again that string of galactic colossus building up over on that edge. Looks like we've got a fat boy there and a fat boy in the back. Two fat boys coming online for Discombobulate. Let's see, Pascal finished out with 9,000 reclaims, 17,000 for Jonas. Discombobulate on 56, 57,000 reclaim. That's where all those fat boys are coming. 75,000 for WSL, who realistically speaking doesn't have a ton to show for it, but he has been building stuffs. Reliably pouring in T3 units is about what it boils down to. Not anything flashy to show for it, but a solid player nonetheless. 28,000 for Naggle. And then the rest of these guys finishing out with a variety of different things. 42,000 for Casmus. That is notable. 11 for the last couple. Alright, back to Observers. That's a chicken online for WSL. He is going to eliminate 
and those Titans. Although that one escaped, and I don't think he should be chasing it because obviously a Gothotha can never catch a Titan because there's like three speed difference there. You're not going to catch a unit that is faster than you are. Alrighty then. Lonely, lonely Titan pinging away at a land factory. It's being healed by T1 engineers. This is the literal definition of utility. The factory is healing faster than the Titan can damage it. Why you do this? <laughs> Barely gonna break back into the yellow and the healing cycle begins once again. Alright, let's get on to something more exciting than engineers beating their heads against the wall. Two Galactic Colossus moving in. That fat boy is just about to finish. Thankfully, Discombobulate does have the commander shield on, so he could technically run in for an overcharge versus one of those Galactic Colossus. Not two of them, that's for sure. One of them is going to go down, the other going to go into full retreat. Fat boy moving up, Strat Bomber's going around the right-hand side. Those are probably headed for WSL's commander, which for some reason is still on T2 and is engaging the Titan on the back of the map. With absolutely no protection. I am kind of at a loss here. I have no idea why this is happening. But there's Strat Bombers moving in now. Maybe he thinks he's safe. I don't know why he would. There's a T3 Scout hovering directly over his head. Pascal saying, dodge it, dodge it. Well, Aeon Strat Bombers are pretty easy to dodge, but it looks like WSL is going to take this one to the face. Commander down, that leaves only Discombobulate to go to war. But he does have two fat boys on his side. Gray has nothing. There is nothing in that base that can stop him. He's got Rambo comps. He's got a T3 ACU that he can push the Sands and Ravagers with. But it looks like he is going to take a hit to the power generators, which is not a good thing when you're trying to push forward. He, he has to push now, and he has to kill them now, otherwise he is going to lose. That Galactic Colossus is going to mutual KO that Rambocom, it looks like. He's gonna get the Rambocom, but the Percival and the Fat Boy following it up are going to kill him. I almost thought it was going to not even succeed at killing the ACU there for a second. He is going to get that. It's like Titan's trying to get around to the right side, pick up all these T1 units and not die to the Fat Boy. Fat Boy is, yes, the shields are power stalling. That means Discombobulate has got to get some more power online. He lost both of his T3 gens. That means his Rambo comms are missing out on a significant portion of the, their health. The Fat Boys are highly susceptible to strap bombers without their shields, even more so than usual. And Discombobulate himself no longer has the commander's shield while he is power stalling. He does have comms in the back, so he can build T3 power. Not sure what the holdup is. He really, really needs to get that power situation resolved. Otherwise, he is going to lose on a technicality. There, he has finally balanced it by cutting off production in a lot of places, I'm sure. And there he goes, building his T3 power. So, he is keeping his shields online. That is good, good. Discombobulate retreating. And Fat Boy is pulling back into range. That Galactic Colossus is going to present some problems. Well, nope, is turning away. Theoretically, White could still win this. He definitely could. He's got so many Sams online that the Strat Bombers, they have to kill him in one pass. They're not going to get a second pass. He has a few ASF of his own. He's got that T3 commander and more than enough reclaim. A vast collection of fat boys and galactic colossuses is, is, is lying around the map. And yeah, he's actually not in that bad of a position. Here come the strap bombers. I hope they're going for the fat boys because that is the more pressing concern. But no, it looks like they are going for the commander. Discombobulate throwing down even more anti-air. Half the shield gone. All the shield gone and 11,000 health, but look at the flares tearing into those strap bombers. You might even say that they flayed them. <laughs> the fat boys are retreating, or should be retreating. <clears throat> wow, voice crack. 
And yeah, too late. Galactic Colossus is within firing range. This is why you always kite, because fat boys do not have the health, though they may have the damage, to go toe to toe with the direct fire T4. Thankfully, with the pair of fat boys and the Ravagers to back them up, looks like they will succeed in killing this Galactic Colossus without losing both fat boys, but one of them is down. Let's see, shall we build another? That is the question. Looks like the power situation has been taken care of, at least for the moment. 11k power income, which is kind of huge for this kind of map situation. Let's see, there's three PGENs, probably resource allocation on the ACU as well. So, still in it to win it. I think Discombobulate can do this because he actually has a higher mass income than Jonas and Nagel combined. Why? Why you quit throwing out the GG and disconnecting? Oh, that is so, so disappointing. There was a GC moving up, which probably would have killed that fat boy. The question is, could the ACU have overcharged it to death before the shield gave out? which with a substantial amount of fire from that fat boy may have been possible. The problem is we have Titans moving around the back, which is probably going to begin raiding the eco and build power and would take some time to deal with. And then we have more Galactic Colossus rolling off the assembly line by the minute. Jonas just pumping those things out as quickly as he can. So it would have been an uphill battle. It would have been a lot of effort for possibly not a reward but i really think that discombobulate should have stuck with that because i think with that fat boy online with the amount of aa he had and the creep he had going along with all of the reclaim that was a winnable situation but faced with the odds bailed i i don't necessarily blame him but i wish he would have played that out that was an epic wonder game it looked like it was going to be a steamroll for the north. Lots of commanders died, got to see commander drops, direct engagement with a ton of units. Very, very interesting game. Thank you to the guy who sent that in. I actually cannot recall which one of these guys it was. I am terribly sorry. I should have specifically looked at that in the message. But you know who you are and know that I enjoyed it. Alrighty, guys. That is going to wrap it up for me. Hopefully you enjoyed it as well. Do not forget about sending in casts for the live cast on Saturday. The map is Fields of the Great Phoenix, the water version that is on the first page in the vault. And if you would like to see 1080p casts in the future, don't forget about the Patreon link in the description. That would greatly help me out. And you'll see a little bit more about what that uh, is going towards in the check-in video tomorrow. Alrighty, that's it for me. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.